Welcome to the chapter of proportions. The chapter of proportions is the logical continuation of the chapter of ratios. हम सब ने कभी ना कभी कहीं ना कहीं इस expression को देखा है. A, B, C and D are four variables in proportion. What do we mean when we say A, B, C, D are four variables in proportion? Well, what we simply mean is that the ratio of A is to B is in proportion with C is to D. Obviously, this thing can be this thing can be written in the division form. As a by b equals c by d. So when I say four variables are in proportion, in a very simple sense, it means a by b equals c by d. Now of course you can take this equation and cross multiply. So what do you have here? A into d equals b into c. If you remember your six standard maths well, then this was something called as product of extremes. Equals product of means. As far as this proportion A is to B in proportion with C is to D is concerned, A and D were called as extremes and B and C were called as means. So what we observe here is product of extremes equals product of means. This is all that we have in the basic definition of proportions. Let us try out an example here. If x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 5 and x minus 6 are in proportion, find x. In this given question, I am given four entities x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 5 and x minus 6. As per my given question, these four entities or these four things are in proportion. Now, what do I mean when I say A, B, C and D are in proportion? It simply means A is to B is same as C is to D. Applying the same logic here, can I say if these four entities are in proportion? That simply means X minus 1 is to X minus 3 is in proportion with X minus 5 is to X minus 6. Now this thing can be further written in the division form. So x minus 1 divided by x minus 3 equals x minus 5 divided by x minus 6. If I cross multiply this, I am going to get x minus 1 into x minus 6 on one side and x minus 3 into x minus 5 onto the other side. Obviously, if you understood this concept well, product of extremes is equal to product of means, you could have directly started by writing this expression. Nonetheless, you can start from here or from here, the equation will become this one. Now, let us multiply the variables here or let us multiply the terms here and get the equation. So, x into x gets me x square, x square minus 6x minus x plus 6 equals x square minus 3x minus 5x plus 15. Now x square cancels x square minus 6 and minus x is minus 7x. So left hand side ends up becoming minus 7x plus 6. Right hand side ends up becoming minus 8x plus 15. Now ye minus 7x ko minus 8x ke saath adjust karte hai. Minus 8x ko left hand side pe move karenge ye positive 8x ho jayega. So I am left with x equals 15 minus 6, 9. In this question, we were required to find the value of x. Here we have it. This was an easy question. I assume we all are understanding the meaning of proportions by using this very simple example. Now, the concept of proportions is not just restricted onto four variables. The concept of proportions can be extended further. For example, instead of saying A, B, C, D are in proportion, what if I say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and so on are in proportion. Now it simply means A by B equals C by D equals E by F equals G by H and so on. Obviously the concept of proportions can be extended to n number of variables provided the number of variables are always even. अगर हमारे पास चार चीजें हैं तो हम उसे प्रोपोर्शन में डाल सकते हैं 
छह चीजें प्रपोर्शन में जा सकती हैं आठ जा सकती हैं लेकिन पांच चीजें प्रपोर्शन में नहीं जा सकती सेवन थिंग्स कैन अवर गो इन टू प्रपोर्शन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ प्रपोर्शन कैन बी एक्सटेंडेड टू एन नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स प्रोवाइडेड द नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स आर ऑलवेज इवन विद दिस वी एंड विद आर बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कंसेप्ट ऑफ प्रपोर्शन नेक्स्ट वट वी हैव इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज ऑपरेशन ऑन प्रपोर्शन टू बिगिन विथ let us say that i've got four variables a b c d which are in proportion what does that mean it simply means that the ratio of a and b is equivalent to the ratio of c and d so a or b ka ratio c or d ke ratio ke equivalent hai ab agar a or b ka ratio c or d ke ratio ke equivalent hai to kya iska inverse true hai kya b by a ka ratio d by c ke ratio ke barabar hona chahiye yes hona chahiye This operation is called as inverted do. So basically, what we are saying here is that if a by b equals c by d, then b by a equals d by c. Inverted do. You can invert the ratios, and yet they will remain equivalent. If a by b equals c by d, then If I cross multiply, then I can take my b on to this side and c on to this side. In that case, what I'll be getting is a by c equivalent to b by d. Again, b and c can alternate. Hence, alternate do. a by b equals c by d in this equation what happens if i add one on both sides my left hand side ends up becoming a plus b by b and my right hand side ends up becoming c plus d by d so if this thing is true this thing has to be true component do and finally what if i subtract one from one from both sides of the equation on my left hand side what i get is a minus b by b and on my right hand side what i get is c minus d by d dividend to these are the four basic operations on proportions and this is something which you already know Do you think मुझे आपको बताने का जरूरत है कि रेश उल्टा किया जा सकता है इनवर्ट एंड हो या ये आपस में अल्टरनेट हो सकते हैं अल्टर एंड हो यहां दोनों साइड वन एड किया जा सकता है दोनों साइड वन माइनस किया जा सकता है दिस इज बेसिक स्टाफ दैट यू ऑल नो और इसमें से आपको कभी पेपर में क्वेश्चन भी नजर नहीं आएगा दिस इज समथिंग विच इवन योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम वुड एज्यूम दैट यू ऑलरेडी नो दी ओनली थिंग विच समाइम्स फाइंड इट्स डायरेक्ट एप्लीकेशन इन क्वेश्चन is the concept of componendo and dividendo under my point 3 what i have is a plus b by b equals c plus d by d and under my point 4 what i have is a minus b by b equals c minus d by d what if i take these two equations and divide them what if mai third point ko ya third equation ko fourth equation se divide karu what i'm going to get is a plus b divided by a minus b equals c plus d divided by c minus d now this is your fifth and final operation on proportions and we like to call it as componendo and dividendo trust me this is something very basic and you hardly ever get a direct question out of operations on proportions sometimes you might come across a question in which we are able to apply the concept of componendo and dividendo directly let's try out one such example here if a plus b divided by a minus b equals 5 by 3 then find a by b in this given question i am given a plus b divided by a minus b equals 5 is to 3 the most direct method which most of the students come across while solving the question is to cross multiply this expression what happens when i cross multiply i get 3a plus 3b 
on one side and 5a minus 5b on the other. Now I take this 3a onto my right hand side. So 5a minus 3a gets me 2a and this 5b when taken onto left hand side gets added with 3b to give me 8b. Now what is the ratio of a is to b? The ratio of a is to b is 8 is to 2 or perhaps 4 is to 1. In this question, I was required to find the ratio of a is to b. So yes, using cross multiplication, you have deduced it to be 4 is to 1. However, if you know the concept of componendo and dividendo, this question becomes almost oral. Kaise? If a plus b divided by a minus b equals 5 is to 3, on applying componendo and dividendo, what I'm going to get is a plus b plus a minus b divided by a plus b minus a minus b and that would be equivalent to 5 plus 3 divided by 5 minus 3. What we are basically doing here is that we are taking the numerator and denominator into consideration. On the application of componendo and dividendo, the new numerator becomes numerator plus denominator on both sides and denominator becomes numerator minus denominator on both sides. On further simplification, my B cancels negative B and my minus A cancels positive A. This minus of minus B gets me plus B. So 2A by 2B ends up becoming 8 by 2. Now this 2 cancels 2. So the value of A by B ends up becoming 4 is to 1. Obviously, what I was doing here was that I was trying to explain you the concept of componendo and dividendo. That is why I actually wrote down this tip. Otherwise, I would like to see it directly if I would to put it on the component and dividend, then I would have to put it on A by B. So, if I was solving this question, I really wanted to solve it orally. Just by looking at this relation, I could have said on applying component and dividend, the left hand side is going to become A by B and my right hand side is going to become 8 is to 2 which is 4 is to 1. So, I could have solved the question orally. Let us take our understanding on to the next example. If 3x plus 4y divided by 3x minus 4y equals a 7 by 3, then find x by y. Building upon the concepts of the previous example, can I begin this question by saying that on this expression, if I apply componendo and dividendo, on my left hand side, what I'm going to get is 3x by 4y. And on my right hand side, what I'm going to get is 7 plus 3, 10 divided by 7 minus 3, 4. Now 4 cancels 4 and the value of x by y ends up becoming 10 is to 3. That's it. That's the benefit of the concept of componendo and dividendo. You can solve such questions without cross multiplication directly using componendo and dividendo. It's an easy concept. It's an easy concept to master. And frankly, you do not get much questions on your paper from the concept of operations on proportions. Next, we move on to the concept of continued proportions. Let us say A, B and C are three variables which are in continued proportion. Now, what do I mean when I say A, B and C are in continued proportion? Well, what I simply mean here is that A ratio B is equivalent to B ratio C. So what I'm trying to say here is that the middle value or the mean value continues over. Okay. Now this proportion can be expressed in the division form as well. So A by B equals B by C. On cross multiplying, what I'm going to get here is B square equals AC. Now this B is many a times referred to as the mean proportion. And sometimes you get very easy questions in which you are given two numbers and you are required to find the mean proportional. Let's try out an example here. Find the mean proportional of 4 and 9. In this question, I am given two numbers 4 and 9 and I am supposed to find their mean proportional. Let us say 
B represents their mean proportional. Now, when B represents their mean proportional, the next thing that I say here is that 4, B and 9 are in continued proportion. What it really means is that 4 ratio B is equivalent to B ratio 9 or perhaps 4 by B equals B by 9 which implies B square is equals to 36 and B ends up becoming plus minus 6. So what is the mean proportional of 4 and 9 or what is the mean proportion of 4 and 9? It is either plus 6 or minus 6. Many times on some standard textbooks what you have is that instead of giving this relation as B square equals AC, they simplify it by writing B equals under root of AC. Uh, unfortunately, this is not correct because B square equals AC is not equivalent to B equals under root of AC. If you this formula, in this case, the mean proportional of 4 and 9 is only 6 because 4 into 9 is 36, under root of that is 6. Always remember B square equals AC which would imply B square equals 36 or B square is equals to plus minus 6. I assume that's an easy concept to follow. Continuing on with the concept of continued proportion. As we have learned in the case of proportions that proportions can be extended for n number of variables. The same is true for continued proportions as well. So if a, B and C are three variables in continued proportion. This thing can be extended to n number of variables. I can say A, B, C, D, E, F and so on are in continued proportion. Now what happens when all these variables are in continued proportion? Well, A by B equals b by c equals c by d equals d by e equals e by f and so on. So the concept I am trying to help you understand here is that the concept of proportion also continues for n number of variables. Unlike in the concept of proportions where we were restricted onto even number of variables, continued proportion can exist for even odd number of variables. Let's move on to the examples of continued proportion now. The mean proportion of two positive numbers differing by 10 is 12. Find the average of two numbers. In this question, I am given two numbers which are differing by 10. So can I begin the question by supposing one of the numbers as x and the other number automatically becomes x plus 10? अगर दो नंबर्स में 10 का डिफरेंस है तो अगर मैं एक नंबर को x अज्यूम करता हूं तो ऑटोमेटिकली मुझे दूसरा नंबर x 10 लेना पड़ेगा नेक्स्ट माय क्वेश्चन सेज ये दोनों नंबर्स का जो मीन प्रोपोर्शन है वो 12 है इन द डिस्कशन दैट वी हैड इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर वी लर्न द कांसेप्ट ऑफ b स्क्वायर बीइंग इक्वल्स टू ac नो व्हाट वाज दिस b दिस b वाज my mean proportion. So mean proportion ka square equals product of two numbers jiske saath mujhe mean proportion nikalna hai. Applying that logic onto this question, can I say mean proportion ka square equals product of two numbers? Isko solve kar lete hai. 144 equals x square plus 10x. Ab sare terms ko x side pe kattha karne pe what we are gonna get is a quadratic equation in x. Now let us simplify this quadratic equation by splitting the middle term. मुझे product में 144 चाहिए और यहां पे जो दो terms हैं उनका sum या difference 10 बनना चाहिए. How can I split my 144 as set of two numbers? Uh, 18 and 8 can be done. So x square plus 18x minus 8x minus 144 equals 0. Iske bich mein se x common nikalne pe andar bachega x plus 18. Aur isme se minus 8 common nikalne pe andar bachega x plus 18. Ab is expression mein se jab hum x plus 18 ko bahar common nikal lenge, to we will be left with x minus 8. Now that implies x has two values. x can either be minus 18 or x can be 8. Now my question here is, can x be minus 18? Of course not. My question directly says that the two numbers are positive numbers. So I nullify this case. 
I take the value of x as 8. Now if one of the terms is 8, the other has to be 18. I assume this was an easy example. Let us move on to the next example now. If a, 6 and b are in continued proportion where a and b are natural numbers such that a is greater than b, how many distinct values can the pair a comma b assume? In this given question, I am given two variables a and b or in ka mean proportion which is 6 diya hai. From this, I can directly say that the product of two variables a and b will be mean proportion ka square. So 6 ka square 36. Also, my question says that a and b are both natural numbers. So a or b are dono hi natural numbers. Now, if a and b are natural numbers and product 36 diya hua hai, there will be limited cases of the values of a and b where pe a or b natural numbers bhi ho and product bhi 36. Ho. Let me look out for all the cases that we can have for product of two variables a and b being 36. To start with, can I say a ka chote se chota value 1 ho sakta hai? Ab agar hum a ke value ko 1 rakhte hai, to a or b ka product 36 maintain karne ke liye b automatically ends up becoming 36. Next, we can try out for 2. Agar main a ko 2 rakhta hai, b 18 ban jata hai. What if I keep my a as 3? Well, my b ends up becoming 12. If my a is 4, my b is 9. If my a is 6, b also ends up becoming 6. What next? The next value that a can take is not 7, not 8. What if a takes up 9? b becomes 4. What if a takes up 12? b ends up becoming 3. Agar main a ko 18 rakhta hu, to b 2 ho jata hai. And finally, 36 and 1 is the final pair of values of a and b. Ek cheez aur given thi. I was given that a is greater than b. Now, if a is greater than b, then this case, this case, this case, this case, and this case, these five cases get rejected. My question was, how many values can the pair a, b assume if these conditions are there? Obviously, I am left with only four pair of values which a and b can assume under these conditions. So, what's the answer for the question? a and b can assume four values as a pair. Two more examples and then we move on to the next concept within the chapter of proportions. a, b, 4 and 5 are in proportion. If a plus b equals 36, find a minus b. In this given question, the first thing that I have here is that four variables a, b, 4 and 5 are in proportion. Now when they are in proportion, it simply means that the ratio of a is to b is equivalent to the ratio of 4 is to 5. So, here I have a and b ka jo ratio hai, wo 4 is to 5. Diya hua hai. From here, can I say that a can be represented as 4 by 5 times of b? Also, my question says a plus b is 36. If a plus b is 36 and a equals 4 by, time, 4 by 5 times b, from here, can I say 4 by 5 of b plus b equals 36. Isko simplify kar lete 4b plus 5b divided by 5 equals 36. 9 by 5b equals 36. 9 fours are 36. b ka value mere pas 20 a gaya. If the value of b is 20 and a plus b is 36, from here I can say that the value of a is 16. If the value of a is 16 and the value of b is 20, I have to find the value of a minus b. Well, a minus b ends up becoming 16 minus 20 and minus 4 is therefore my answer. An easy question indeed. One more question and then we move on to the next topic. If x, x plus 3 and x square plus 6 are in proportion, find x. Most of the students begin this question by assuming that x, x plus 3 and x square plus 6 are in continued proportion. Where did my question say that these are in continued proportion? The question simply states that we, have, we are given three entities which are in proportion. We have already learned in the basic discussion on proportions that the minimum number of things that you need to have to get a proportion are 4. Yahan pe teen cheeze aapko proportion mein di hui hai which simply means that data is inconsistent.
Now, it was a trick question. It was a silly question. You are not likely to get such a silly, stupid question on your paper. However, I have given this in examples so that we are able to reiterate the fact that minimum number of things which can be in proportion are four. And beyond that, if you are creating a proportion, the number of things or the number of entities in proportion would always be even number of entities. With this, we end with our discussion on proportions. Next, we move on to the law of equal ratio. Let us understand the law of equal ratio using a very simple example. If A by B equals C by D equals E by F equals K, then find the value of the following in terms of K. In this given example, I am required to find the value of these ratios in terms of K. Most of you by this time have already solved the answer as K. In Tino cases, mein jo ratios ka value aata hai, wo K hai. Probably what you would have done here was that uh, since A by B was given to me as K, C by D was given to me as K and E by F was given to me as K, you could have simply expressed your A, C and E in terms of K. किस तरीके से अगर a by b k है तो I can directly say कि a की जगह b k substitute किया जा सकता है अगर c by d k है तो I can directly say कि c की जगह d k substitute किया जा सकता है और अगर e by f k है तो I can directly say e की जगह मैं f k substitute कर सकता हूँ Now my numerator was a plus c plus e so that becomes b k plus d k plus f k divided by b plus d plus f in the next step i can take a k common from my numerator to my numerator ke terms mein se k common nikal leta hu andar mere paas bachta hai b plus d plus f so k times b plus d plus f divided by b plus d plus f next these two things get cancelled and what i am left with is k you can do pretty much the same thing for your second example as well as for your third example but the best part is that if you understand law of equal ratio then this thing becomes intuitive let me explain you what law of equal ratio says law of equal ratio says that if a by b equals c by d equals e by f equals k then any linear combination of numerators divided by the same combination of denominators always gives the ratio as k let me explain what i am saying यहां पे मेरे पास न्यूमिरेटर्स में टर्म्स थे ए सी एंड ई मैंने यहां पे लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन मींस पावर वन मैंने एक लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन बनाया इन न्यूमिरेटर्स का एज लेट से ए प्लस सी प्लस ई अब मैंने डिनोमिनेटर्स को पकड़ा जो कि बी प्लस डी बी डी एंड एफ थे और बी डी एंड एफ को यूज करके मैंने एक कॉम्बिनेशन बनाया डिनोमिनेटर्स का जो कि न्यूमिरेटर्स के कॉम्बिनेशन के सेम था ये रेशो हमेशा कह देगी टेक इट फॉर योर सेकंड एग्जांपल एज वेल ए सी एंड ई वर द टर्म्स ऑफ न्यूमिरेटर मैंने इनमें रिलेशन क्या बनाया ए प्लस सी माइनस ई का रिलेशन बनाया सेम रिलेशन मैंने डिनोमिनेटर में बना दिया बी प्लस डी माइनस एफ अब ये दोनों को कंपेयर करने पे हमेशा के ही आएगा दिस इज माई लॉ ऑफ इक्वल रेशो लेट्स राइट फॉर थर्ड एग्जाम्पल ए सी एंड ई रिलेशन क्या बना ए प्लस थ्री एंड डिनोमिनेटर में रिलेशन क्या बना b प्लस थ्री डी प्लस फाइव एफ सो जो रिलेशन मैं न्यूमिनेटर के टर्म्स में बना रहा हूं जिस सीक्वेंस में मैं उनका रिलेशन बना रहा हूं सेम सीक्वेंस में मैं डिनोमिनेटर्स का रिलेशन बना रहा हूं द रेशो इज अगेन गोइंग टू यील्ड मी k दिस इज वॉट लॉ ऑफ इक्वल रेशो स्टेट्स लेट एस ट्राई आउट फ्यू मोर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑन द सेम थिंग If a बाई बी इक्वल्स सी बाई डी इक्वल्स ई बाई एफ इक्वल्स के then which of the following ratios equal k in the last uh, set of examples we learned how to apply law of equal ratios in these set of examples we will learn where law of equal ratio does not apply before we delve into these three examples we need to reiterate what my law of equal ratio states my law of equal ratio states that if this thing holds true then any linear combination of numerators divided by the same combination of denominators ye jo ratio banega ye hamesha k dega do points hai isme samajhne wale number 1 it has to be the same relation in your numerator as well as in your denominator second it has to be a linear relation if i create a quadratic equation or let's say if i create a cubic relation 
then the answer won't be k okay so there are two conditions to laws of equal ratio number one it has to be same relation in numerator as well as denominator number two it has to be a linear relation now let us try out these three examples in my first example what i have is b plus a plus e divided by b plus d plus f now understand one thing very clearly यहां पे यू डू हैव अ लीनियर रिलेशन ऑफ न्यूमिनेटर्स बट द रिलेशनशिप इज नॉट द सेम इन द न्यूमिनेटर के टर्म्स एंड डिनोमिनेटर के टर्म्स यहां पे मेरे पास b प्लस ए प्लस ई है सो वट आईव डन इज दैट आईव टेकन वन टर्म फ्रॉम न्यूमिनेटर इन अदर टर्म फ्रॉम न्यूमिनेटर बट अ थर्ड टर्म फ्रॉम डिनोमिनेटर इन अ सिमिलर वे हेयर आई एम टेकिंग b, d एंड f, विच मीन्स ऑल द थ्री टर्म्स आईव बिन टेकन फ्रॉम डिनोमिनेटर so what i observe in my example 1 is that no matter what i do law of equal ratio is not applicable here therefore this is not equals to k take your second example now in your second example you do have the same relation in the terms of numerator as in the terms of denominator however this time the power of the expression is 2 Law of equal ratio categorically states that it has to be a linear relation. अगर यहां पर हमारे expression का degree टू हो जाता है तो law of equal ratio won't apply. The answer is not equals to k. It is not equals to k. Third one, a plus b c plus सेवन e. Again, what we are having here is a variable b getting multiplied with variable c so that the end of the day the degree of the expression ends up becoming 2 it becomes a quadratic expression because you have a degree 2 when the two variables are getting multiplied so again law of equal ratio is not applicable here therefore the answer is not equals to k now probably you are never going to see any such example on your paper but this is a good example these three are a set of good examples which help you understand where not to apply the law of equal ratio let me reiterate the entire concept law of equal ratio has two conditions number 1 it has to be same relation for terms in numerator as in denominator number 2 it has to be a linear relation if you understand this much of logic you understand the law of equal ratio now let us take our understanding of law of equal ratio into quadratic and cubic expressions as well if a by b equals c by d equals e by f equals k then find the value of the following in terms of k now before you dismiss this uh, example by saying that yahan pe to terms ka power 2 hai yahan pe law of equal ratio nahi lagega before you do that i would want you to try solving the question from the basic concept of ratios if a by b equals k then e can be expressed as bk in a similar fashion i can express c as dk and e as fk this much we have already learnt in the previous set of examples now what happens when i make the substitution of a c and e into this expression well this expression ends up becoming dk whole square plus dk whole square plus fk whole square divided by b square plus d square plus f square now what if i further simplified can i say my numerator ends up becoming b square k square plus d square k square plus f square k square divided by b square plus d square plus f square from the terms in numerator what happens when i take a k square common well if i take a k square common i am left with b square plus d square plus f square divided by b square plus d square plus f square now these two get cancelled so my final answer ends up becoming k square my question wanted me to express this ratio in terms of k here we have it the answer is k square the logic i think we are able to deduce the logic here law of equal ratio kehta tha ki agar hum koi linear combination banate hain numerators ka aur same combination banate hain denominators ke liye to uska ratio hamare paas hamesha k rahega is understanding ko further extend kiya ja sakta hai basically what i am doing here is that i am creating a quadratic relation of my numerators 
and the same relation is there in my denominators as well another additional thing that we need to understand here is that in a square c square and e square the degree of the expression is uniformly 2 so agar ye term ka degree 2 hai to is term ka bhi degree 2 hai is term ka bhi degree 2 hai if you have a quadratic relation of numerators so that the degree of all the terms is uniformly 2 and the same thing is happening in denominator you can directly call the answer as k square or you can directly deduce the answer as k square let us have your second example here we have variable a variable c multiplied together and then e square is getting subtracted from that now a c e what about the sequence of denominator what about the relation of denominator it is b times d and from that you are subtracting f square so what we observe here is that a into c minus e square b into d minus f square so first of all the relation in the terms of numerator and the relation in terms of denominators is same also since a into c gets me degree 2 e square gets me degree 2 from here i can directly deduce that since the degree is uniformly 2 in my numerator as well as in my denominator the answer will be k square hopefully we are understanding this extension of the concept of law of equal ratio now this is not just confined to quadratic expressions you can also extend it to your cubic expressions and higher degree expressions let us try out few examples in which we'll be delving deeper into the understanding of law of equal ratio if a b c and d are in continued proportion find a square plus b square plus c square by b square plus c square plus d square in terms of b plus c the first part of my question says that a b c and d are in continued proportion what does that mean it simply means a by b equals b by c equals c by d okay so since they are in continued proportion this is what i deduce here what i have to find here is the value of a square plus b square plus c square divided by b square plus c square plus d square now i have to find this value in terms of b and c so mujhe is value ko b and c ke terms mein express karna hai i begin the question by considering this ratio a by b equals b by c equals c by d as equal to k now if these three terms are equal to k then from here i can directly say that the numerator of this ratio is nothing but an expression of all the numerators of these ratios so basically me is in ratios ke numerators ko ek relation mein dal raho which is a quadratic relation i am building the same relation using the denominators in the denominator so from here i directly say ki is ratio ka value k square hona chahiye agar ye aapas mein equal to k hai to is ratio ka value k square hona chahiye पर मुझे इसे k के टर्म्स में एक्सप्रेस नहीं करना मुझे इसे b एंड c के टर्म्स में एक्सप्रेस करना है ओ k इज b by c सो कैन आई से माय आंसर इज b by c का होल स्क्वायर होपफुली दैट्स एन इजी एग्जांपल लेट्स ट्राई आउट अनदर एग्जांपल इफ a by b equals c by d equals e by f equals 5 by 3 फाइंड द रेशियो a square minus c e by d f minus b square in this question, मुझे जो ratio निकालना है, वो है a square minus c e divided by d f minus b square. अब अगर मैं law of equal ratio यहाँ पे apply करना चाहता हूँ, तो सबसे पहले तो इस expression को इस तरीके से change करना पड़ेगा कि numerator के terms में और denominator के terms में जो relation बने वो same हो. उसके लिए from my denominator can I take a negative common? Yes, I can. So मैंने इस expression में से minus one common निकाल लिया, so that now my expression ends up becoming a square minus c e divided by b square minus d f now what we observe is that the relation of terms of numerators is same as the relation of terms of denominators furthermore i know ki yaha pe upar throughout degree 2 hai niche throughout degree 2 hai so answer for this ratio will automatically be k square now what was k square 
well if a by b equals c by d equals e by f equals 5 by 3 then this 5 by 3 represents my k so can i say my final answer is going to be minus 25 by 9 an easy example isn't it let's have one more example on the similar concept if a by b equals c by d equals 4 by 9 find the ratio of a cube minus c cube by b cube minus d cube whole to the power 1 by 2 in the given question i can apply the law of equal ratio yahan pe mere paas a c b and d hai given uh, expression mein jisko jiska value mujhe nikalna hai mere paas a cube minus c cube and b cube minus d cube hai yahan pe directly law of equal ratio lagta hai so agar ye expression throughout cubic hai the answer for this expression would be k cube now what was my k my k was 4 by 9 if my k is 4 by 9 and my answer is k cube can i express it as 4 into 4 into 4 after all cube hai and 9 can be expressed as 9 into 9 into 9 okay however yahan pe throughout 1 by 2 bhi tha now 1 by 2 is as good as under root so can i say my final answer would look something like 2 into 2 into 2 divided by 3 into 3 into 3 so my answer is 8 by 27 I assume these three easy examples of law of equal ratios help us understand the concept from its basics. Now let us move to some more advanced examples of the same concept. If this given expression equals 3 by 5 then find the value of a plus b plus c. Now we have seen the examples we have an expression and we have check that there is a law of equal ratio or not. इस क्वेश्चन में हमें एक्सप्रेशन खुद बनाना है। Let us see how to do that। मुझे a plus b plus c का वैल्यू चाहिए। Where do I have a plus b plus c? Here I have it। Now the easiest thing for me to do is to create a relation जहाँ पे डिनोमिनेटर्स ऐड हो रहे हैं। Okay? Because अगर मैं डिनोमिनेटर्स को ऐड करूँ तो मेरे पास a plus b plus c का टर्म आ जाएगा। Now if I'm creating an expression जहाँ पे denominators add हो रहे हैं, then the denominators would end up looking like c plus a plus b, which is as good as a plus b plus c. But अगर मैं denominators में इस तरीके का relation बना रहा हूँ, और मैं चाहता हूँ कि मेरा ratio का value वापस मेरे पास k आ जाए, for that I'll have to create the same relation for numerators as well. Now what were the numerators? Numerators were these terms. तो इनको भी मुझे similar fashion में add करना है. So 1 plus a minus b, ये c के corresponding है, plus 1 plus b minus c, ये a के corresponding है, plus 1 plus c minus a, ये b के corresponding है. Now what happens here? जब मैं इन तीनों को add करता हूँ, तो minus b से plus b cancel हो जाता है, plus a से minus a cancel हो जाता है, और minus c से plus c cancel हो जाता है, बचता क्या है? 1 plus 1 plus 1. 3. So can I say this expression now simplifies as 3 upon achha, c plus a plus b ko I can write it as a plus b plus c. So the expression simplifies as 3 upon a b c equals 3 by 5 which implies that the value of a plus b plus c is 5. Hopefully we are following this example here. Two more examples and then we end the chapter of proportions. If a upon b plus c equals b upon a plus c equals c upon a plus b equals r, then what values can r assume given a plus b plus c is not equal to 0? In this given question, I am handling this expression and this expression eventually equals r. Mujhe yaha pe r ka value nikalna hai. Obviously, the one thing which is very visible here is that if I add up all the three numerators, that means a plus b plus c, तो डिनोमिनेटर्स में मेरे पास जो टर्म्स बनेंगे उसमें 2 ऑफ a plus b plus c आएगा लेट मी एक्सप्लेन व्हाट आई एम डूइंग आई एम क्रिएटिंग अ रिलेशन इन व्हिच आई एम सिंपली एडिंग द न्यूमरेटर्स सो माय न्यू न्यूमरेटर बिकम्स a plus b plus c इफ आई एम एडिंग द न्यूमरेटर्स द सिमिलर थिंग और द सेम थिंग हैज टू बी डन फॉर डिनोमिनेटर्स एज़ वेल सो a के कोरिस्पोंडिंगली मेरे पास b plus c है b के कोरिस्पोंडिंगली मेरे पास a plus c है और C के correspondingly मेरे पास A plus B है। अब जब मैं इनको add करूँगा तो ये वापस equals R हो जाएंगे। 
फर्दर मोर बी प्लस सी ए प्लस सी एंड ए प्लस बी इवेंचुअली रीअरेंज दम सेल्स टू गिव मी दी एक्सप्रेशन ट्वाइस ऑफ ए प्लस बी प्लस सी अब अगर मेरा डिनोमिनेटर ट्वाइस ऑफ ए प्लस बी प्लस सी बन रहा है और मेरा न्यूमिनेटर ऑलरेडी ए प्लस बी प्लस सी था और ये पूरा एक्सप्रेशन आर था तो अगले स्टेप में हम कह सकते हैं कि आर का वैल्यू वन बाय टू है वन मोर एग्जाम्पल एंड देन वी एंड विद आर डिस्कशन ऑन द चैप्टर ऑफ प्रपोर्शन If A, B, C and D are in continued proportion, then find the mean proportion of A plus B and C plus D. In the given question, the first thing that I have is the variables A, B, C and D being in continued proportion. So I can express the relation as A by B equals B by C equals C by D. Let's say equal to another variable K. Next, what I have. is the question which asks me that what will be the mean proportion of a plus b and c plus d so mujhe a plus b and c plus d ka mean proportion nikalna hai if you remember your discussion on continued proportions you would definitely remember the relationship that we have developed here b square equals ac b kya tha b mera mean proportion tha a aur c kya tha a aur c wo do terms the jinke beech mein b mera mean proportion tha If you understand this logic here, then can I say mean proportion का whole square, mean proportion का whole square will be the product of a plus b and c plus d. Now, from this expression, I have to somehow extract a plus b as well as c plus d. Now, इसमें से a plus b कैसे निकाला जा सकता है? Can I say on applying law of equal ratio, a plus b By b plus c equals k and अगर मुझे c plus d निकालने then b plus c upon c plus d equals k now this k and this k are equal so मैं इनको आपस में equate कर सकता हूँ can I say a plus b divided by b plus c equals b plus c divided by c plus d from here I can say a plus b into a plus b into c plus d equals b plus c whole square now consider this equation and consider this equation by comparing these two we can directly say that the mean proportion is nothing but b plus c I assume this is not that difficult of an example that we cannot master it with time. With this, we end the entire chapter of proportions. Hopefully, this was an easy chapter. In fact, proportions एक ऐसा chapter है जिसमें से ज़्यादातर questions काफी easy level के नज़र आते हैं. Now, what you need to do is that you need to follow up this lecture with the worksheet that we have.